The 2023 presidential election presented our nation and its people the greatest opportunity for a reset. We had everything going for us, a legal framework in the 2022 Electoral Act and the Beavers technology. And the enthusiasm of Nigerians to turn out and in large numbers was an added bonus. However, the dreams and aspirations of Nigerians who braze all the challenges to go and cast their votes on Saturday, 25th of February, 2023, were shattered by the conduct of the Independent National Electoral Commission, which failed woefully to live up to expectations. The weekend election was neither free nor fair. Preliminary assessments indicate that it is the worst conducted election since the return to democratic rule. The manipulation and fraud that attended this election was unprecedented in the history of our nation. I can still not understand why the electoral empire was in such a hurry to conclude collation and announcement of the results. Given the number of complaints and irregularities of bypassing of the beavers, failure of uploading to the IRVE, and unprecedented cancellations and disfranchisement of millions of voters in breach of the Electoral Act and the Commission's own guidelines, it was indeed a rape of democracy. Having consulted with leaders of our party who are seated here with me, and Nigerians from different walks of life, I have come to the conclusion that the processes and outcome of the presidential and national assembly elections of last Saturday was grossly flawed in every material particular and as such must be challenged by all of us. Daniel Bala is the spokesperson at Sikokoa Presidential Campaign Council. He joins us next to sh give us some perspectives on the matter. Good morning. Thank you for coming on today. Good morning. Thank well, listening to me. your principal, it appeared largely as though mm -hmm. he was the party <coughs> flawed, faulted the process. Right. But in the end, we just heard him say the process and the outcome. Uh, but for the avoidance of that, if we could shed some light, is it that the party is challenging both the process and the results as well? is the process that will lead to the result. Uh, even when you go to court uh, in challenging the outcome, you need to demonstrate that there is a substantial non-compliance in the process. You know, election starts from when the whistle is blown, actually not on that day of election, and it, it is concluded when certificates, are, when, when, when parties are declared winners and certificates issued. The problem with this, uh, uh, this election cycle is, 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 how do I put it? It is, it is hydra-headed. So, for example, even the process can be challenged, the outcome can be challenged, then the issue of character in the process. Because the whole idea of INEC being an unbiased umpire is that INEC is to play the role of a judge. I'm not for A, I'm not for B. I mean, so many things that led up to the announcement suggested to us that is, uh, you know, there was a compromise. I, I'll give you an example. Uh, during the proceedings, there was a lawyer, in his, a senior friend, who posed as an amicus courier in law when, when somebody is there as an officer, a helper to the court to help the court appreciate uh, the law from his own perspective. He's a lawyer to Tidibu, Baba Tundi Ogala. And when I watch the proceedings, anytime somebody raises an observation to the chairman, then Baba Tundi Ogala will rise up to do the clarification. And sadly, is the, the APC legal advisor. 
Mm -hmm. Mr. Babasunde Ogala is the APC legal advisor. I think it was a coalition. It's not, the, it's not the advisor, it's not the lawyer to Tinubu, it's the APC mm -hmm. legal advisor. Are you saying on the basis of, uh, I want to know your premise for saying that he is not the APC legal advisor, he was a legal advisor to APC, he's not. So it, it's not something, the point I'm trying to make is that it's not hidden. The fact that he's a member of the APC and it was once, at least if he's not the current legal advisor, mm -hmm is the legal advisor to the APC. No, I want you first to admit that he's not the current, he was former. So if he was a former advisor, then it is immaterial. He is no longer representing APC at the time he was talking. Let's agree on that. I'm not arguing, in fact. But that's point number one. I, I'm sorry, I, I do not get your point. If someone was once a partisan member, he's still a member, a card-carrying member of the APC, he hasn't resigned his, his did, membership. Did you, did you watch the proceedings? I did, of course. He I introduced did. himself as what? I do not know what he introduced. Then listen to me. Just a moment, okay. Mr. Um, um, the point I'm trying to make is this, is that if his membership of the APC is not hidden and it is known, and he was once a legal advisor to the APC, I want to imagine that that point of objection should have been raised right there at the proceedings. So that's the point. You, you made a point. You don't want me to make a point. You don't even know that he was, he is not the legal advisor of APC. So you don't know. Who is the legal I, advisor of APC? It's not my duty to know. I was in APC. I know. You can, you can make a call right now. Babatunde Ogala was the legal advisor to APC before the election that produced Senator Abdullah Adamo. He's, that is not a hidden oh. thing. But let me just clarify that. So he is not. You have to admit, you don't argue about that. Then secondly, let's take it that, let's, let me even take it on the worst case scenario, on your own top, that he is a legal advisor. That then place obligation on the chairman to also demand that the legal advisors of other political parties be there to also give their side of the story. That's why judges are called unbiased empire. If I'm going to write a judge, if I have a case against you and I write a judge, I must copy you. That's justice. That never happened. That's the point I'm making. The and point secondly... I'm, just a moment, Mr. Boala. The point I'm trying to raise with you is the fact that you use some legal terms. I'm not a lawyer. Many Nigerians are not lawyers. The, the point... What's the we, term that I use? I do not know what you use, but they're Latin terms. Which you said, I mean, it, what it presupposes, the, the meaning I got from that, sorry? That is a helper, is of, a the helper of the court. Is that a legal Just legal a term? moment, you said something, something I, I did not understand. Latin. 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 She didn't, she didn't hear me, I heard she's hear you, arguing. You, uh, Mr. Buala, no, I'm not arguing, I'm asking you a question, because the, no. the premise on which you raise these things can raise objections in the mind of Nigerians. When no, you don't say, bring Nigerians there. Just a I moment. I think it's about you. It's, this is... This is a this is this program is not about me. It's sunrise. But if you don't permit just, me just to respond, moment, you Bola, ask questions, you make, answer. Just how make, else will the Nigerian people understand Bola, what I'm saying? Are you going to let me ask you a question or not? I will if you can permit me to answer as well. Just a moment then. So you've said he's a helper of the court, and you also use some legal terms to describe him, meaning that what? He's supposed to be neutral, isn't that right? That's the question I'm raising with you. If I'm, I will answer if you are prepared to listen. No, no, let's go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I mean, it, it's... So he appeared in the place posing as amicus courier. And you said Nigerians need to know. Even people on the street know amicus courier means the friend of the court. The friend of the court appears in court not representing any interest, but assisting the court in appreciating issues that are of concern in the proceedings. And I said, he is not Amicus Korea. He is a lawyer to Tinibu. I, that's why I have to repeat that. Now, um, but even if he poses as Amicus Korea, the chairman ought to have asked him, uh, who are you representing? That's what justice is done. Well, and it, say, and they, when they're all there as representatives of their political parties right. on the day, so if there were extraneous matters, don't you think that the other parties would have raised it? Yes, so Dino day. did that. And uh, the, the world watched. Dino drew the attention of the chairman to Section 65. Then uh, Babatunde Ogala stood up and misled the court. Actually, the, the commission ought to, they all have their legal advisor. They even have Professor Sokoye on the high table, who was better suited to give interpretation to anything. There was no basis whatsoever for the chairman to rely on anybody else sitting there to give a legal opinion. Wait, but, did, did he rely? Yes, he did. Two oh. out, not even once. As soon as the man finishes, he'll say, okay, now it is clear. Let's go to the next. Okay, because you, you spoke about 
the not just the process, the outcome, but you spoke about the character. Right. So I'm wondering now, when you say the character, is it that there are provisions in the Electoral Act 2022 that speaks about the character of who on that particular day, that point of collision? Yeah. Yes. The character of the proceedings there is called transparency. That's the only way you would divest yourself from interest and divest yourself from interference because the process ought to be transparent. It was not that day. This is, the, this is the sad part of what Baba Tunde Ogala did that suggests to me it was a Broadway show rather than a proceedings. Section 65 was kicked when we were doing the amendment. Uh, APC wow. lawmakers kicked against the inclusion of Section 65. In fact, they threatened to go to court that day. But eventually it was passed a law. Now, the proviso to Section 65 actually ought to have reminded the chairman mm -hmm. that he could not proceed and conclude in announcement until he dealt with the issues raised by the different parties. Okay, but I had a, a lawyer who wrote us on that day as well. He tried to remind us that Section 65 is directly relevant to the issues of declaration and return. Yeah. On the C, presiding officers are not involved with declaration or, and return. This is the function of a returning officer like the INEC chairman. Section 65, strictly speaking, deals with post-election issues. So that one is uh, misplaced. But if you, because of time you don't, if you read the section, if it is conclusive, reference to announcement and declaration is at the polling unit. It's okay, but, of but, the result collated. But when there's a dispute like this, mm -hmm. with parties present there, mm -hmm. isn't the best place to sort it out in court? No, 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 no. That's the point. No. It, it, the best way is to adjourn and then be advised and then to continue. Why did I say that? Because section 55 was included just before this election. And the deliberation that led to it, INEC brought that, suggested that given the fact that every time we have tribunal cases, we want this Section 65 to be included to help us deal with issues that can be dealt with before you go to tribunal to deal on, with larger issues. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that if your party has a perspective on the points of law right. and another party or maybe the commission disagrees with that, what I'm saying is isn't the best place to resolve that will then be in court. Yeah, because that part of the provision is not a disputed or ambiguous matter. Because we, don't, we didn't just wake up to C-65. There is a background to it. That's why even when they are interpreting the law, the judge will say it's looking at the intent okay. of the lawmakers. Now, this is Section 65. Mm -hmm. What it is meant to cure is that this, the, the, the unbiased umpire in this instance has seven days within which to resolve matters of dispute at the polling unit. Like the polling okay. unit, you announce, you declare. What you announce, you declare. It says if people are raising objection, he has seven days from when that result was announced and declared at the okay. polling unit to resolve it. Now, um, still speaking about what your party has said they wanted to do, yeah. the process and the result, the outcome. Right. Because, I mean, part of the issues too that Mark highlighted in the report that Yaga put out there, isn't it possible that because when they gave the framework within which the results came through, mm -hmm. the results, the findings of Yaga, mm -hmm. and the range of the results right. almost corresponded, corresponded with the results that were announced. That's the range that they gave in their findings. So one was wondering from your party, is it that the result you have is contrary to what was announced by the commission? Yes, it was massively contrary. And the only way we could have uh, you know, resolved that was if they uploaded the result as required by law, by the guideline, by their promises and all, then where there is conflict. I remember it was in August last year when that issue came up. And I heard Okoye saying where there is a dispute between the, ma the uploaded result and the manually uh, transmitted result that manually would take. I now raise objection. I said, no, that's not how the history of that uh, amendment came. INEG was forced to issue a statement clarifying that the electronically transmitted result, which would have been uploaded, is the one that takes precedence. Okay, let's go to Lagos. Our colleagues have got questions for you. Go ahead, please. Right. Thanks, Chamberlain. Uh, Mr. Boala, uh, that section 65, it, it's been quoted uh, quite a lot. And just for the benefit of those uh, who don't know the words or at least the wordings of that section, I'd just like to take it again of the Electoral Act 2022 says, uh, provided that the commission, after I talked about the decision of the returning officer, shall be final on any question arising from, you know, unmarked ballot paper, rejected ballot paper and all of that. So it says, provided... Uh, that the commission shall have the power within seven days to review the declaration and return where the commission determines that the said declaration and return 
was not made voluntarily or was made contrary to the provisions of the law, regulations and guidelines and manual for the election. And then part, the, the second part of 65 says, a decision of the returning officer under subsection 1 may be reviewed by an election tribunal or court of competent jurisdiction in an election petition proceedings under this act. I imagine that's what now what your party is going on to do. But regarding the, the objection raised by your party's agent, Senator Tino Melai, and your party expected that the process should have been stopped at that point, the law is quite clear that where the commission determines, so the, I mean it's still the right of a commission to determine and make the decision and clearly it didn't make that decision. So isn't that trying to arm twist uh, the commission to still make a decision even though, I imagine, with all the considerations it had and all the information it had, it didn't determine or think it was necessary. Uh, well, that, that where the commission determines is after they attempt to resolve it. So you have to, like, when you hear the court determines a matter, it means the court would have heard parties and then makes a determination. So this is the stage. You raise complaint that at the polling unit, uh, the results that were announced did not reflect what actually happened or that somebody, they used a wrong ballot paper, whatever is the complaint that you see in the proviso. Now, the chairman has seven days within this period to resolve it. And then it says, if at the end of the day, and the commission determines that either you're right or wrong, because definitely the determination of the commission will probably favor one and will not favor another one, then that one is also subjected to court. So it's a stage. Complain at the polling unit, or ward, or local government, or even state, and then when they come to the national, he has seven days within which to resolve the matter. Whatever is his finding can still be subjected to the court. That's what that means. Because if you see at the beginning, when it says the, 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 the determination of the, uh, the returning officer shall be final in respect of A, B, and C, and then the commission can now review the result. Because at the polling unit, it is expected that you cannot stop the voting process and then begin to do adjudication. So the polling officer will have to reach a decision one way or the other. And that decision at the polling unit is final. However, the commission, like the appellate of the polling unit, must review this within seven days if the complaint is raised. And during this period, when they determine that A or B or C is the issue, that issue can still be subjected to court. Now, the reason why Section 65, the uh, proviso was added, was that most of the times things just go to the court and by then it becomes difficult because then the court will shut you out on technicality. So the chairman ought not to have finally declared the winner of the presidential election given the fact that complaints were being made in this process. So what he would have done based on section 65, take a state, observe the complaint, take a state, observe the complaint, take a state. By the time you finish with all the states of the federation at the FCT, you now adjourn to a day not more than seven days where you will make a determination of that and then announce the final result. Then whoever Akuala. is aggrieved can then take it to court. That was the b major reason why well, Section 65 was included, which APC at the time even objected. But Mr. what happened Akuala, that day was I, that I wonder, they sidestepped that provision. I wonder if other lawyers will agree with you on, on that, you know, the, your interpretation about Section 65 being that INEC should have waited uh, before it declared the results based on the complaints. But that's not my concern um, in, in my engagement with you this morning. Uh, you say that your party is challenging the process, that it's the process that determines the outcome. And then your uh, presidential candidate is also saying that uh, the process, uh, he described the process as a rape on democracy. And then in another breath, he says he's ready to form an alliance with uh, the Labour Party. I'd like you to clarify what exactly your party's position is on the outcome of the presidential election. If you're forming an alliance with the Labour Party, are you still saying, or are you saying that you won the election, but you, you still want to form an alliance with the Labour Party? Please clarify this. He did not say he's forming an alliance. He, say, he was asked, Can, will you form an alliance? He said, if they are interested, that he is interested. But the, the, the gamut of our argument at this time is not premised on any Labour Party or NNPP or any other party. Our position is that this election was marred with irregularity, fraud, and in every respect, we are going to challenge it. And in the bid to challenge it, we have enough evidence to be able to prove that this election cannot stand. When you challenge the election, if the verdict goes in your favor, there will be an order for a fresh election. 
there is even a wider implication. That day, the chairman, even if you were to determine on the evidence of the fraud result in front of you, you should have known as well that Asiwa Jibola and Metunibu did not meet the minimum standards of 25% in the FCT. So before, uh, you ought to have ordered for a fresh election. So our position is we are going to challenge that result in the code of law, but it is not just the code of law where we are stopping because the proof for our decision to challenge is supported by the CSO, both domestic and foreign, in their various reports. This is without prejudice to our first-hand result sheet that we have given to us by INEC in all the polling units across the Federation of Nigeria, and that it will not stand. Is the PDB worried? Because, I mean, when we went through, quite a number of people felt, whoa, PDP didn't win Lagos, yeah. PDP didn't win Rivers, PDP yeah. didn't win Kano. PD they just wonder, what's going on? It, it's, isn't PDP getting the message that this is actually shifting? Nigerians seem to be looking elsewhere. No, there are, two things to, there are two sides to it. So I'll give you a theory. This result was mechanized, you know, you know orchestrated by the APC from a strategic point of view. It is a high-level orchestration with high-level criminal intent between Nigerians and foreigners. And this is the theory. They deliberately inflated Lagos votes in favor of labor so labor will be distracted into celebrating that and will not put their eyes in the other parts of the country where they're going to be rigged. Does, P does, does PDP results show that? Now, I, yes, I will show you. Now, yes, then they went to Kano and deliberately inflated the results so that this man will massively get people in the House of Representatives and probably, I think, a Senate. So you'll be distracted into saying, at least I made some gains. And, and in least, Abuja? Let me finish. No, just then a then, moment. And in Abuja? Let me finish my thought. You, you have are to finishing. Yeah, we're almost out of time, Mr. Then let's Buala. go. Another time. No, no, Mr. Buala, just, just. Okay. In Abuja, what happened then, in Abuja? So they did that in Mr. Kano. Buala. Then in, um, in, in Abuja, in, in, in I'm our asking own case, you a question. The governors, the G5 governors, they did it in Mr. such a way Buala. that the G5 governors will yeah, all lose. Answer the Abuja. They will do it in such a way that all the G5 will govern us so that we'll be distracted. So even if we lose, at least the G5 governors will serve them right. Okay, so what about the Abuja one? The Abuja FCT result, uh -huh. you can see that. 25, they couldn't meet the 25%, they were 19%. But you were 16%. Yes, that's what I'm saying. They made every effort. You see that the Abuja result was delayed to a long time. They made every effort to up it. As soon as they failed that, that was when their theories started coming that you don't even require 25% in so, Abuja. So your party is going to prove that all of these things what, were not the way it was? Yeah, and I will guarantee you that this election is all going right. to be an old and other fresh election. All right, uh, Daniel Bala is a spokesperson at Tiku Okoa Presidential Campaign Council. Thank you for coming on. We will be back. We've got uh, another you. perspective, another leg to go in just a moment. Please stay with us. Thank you.